you just joined us on the system after dark. This is a homegrown number, courtesy of E3 and Cracker. Bula, how's it going? I'm D, your host on the system after dark, right here on Today FM. Today is hit music. You can catch me weeknights at 7 p.m. That's from Monday to Friday, only on the home of today's hit music. And don't forget, that's D with you every weeknight on the system after dark. Good evening, this is FBC News. I'm Jackie Spade. In this bulletin, two more people charge for sedition in Raki Raki as police track down more members of rebel group. Fiji to strengthen export procedure compliance as New Zealand lifts ban on agro imports. Airports Fiji Limited bounce back from trouble days and pays record dividend of $15 million. It's a story that continues to unfold. That's how Police Chief of Intelligence ACP Henry Brown has described the recent sedition investigations in the West. It's been a week of arrests, charges and speculation of gun use, with about 20 people now implicated in the alleged plot. Edwin Nunn reports. More details are emerging for the police on the alleged seditious training. As we continue to run the people, you know, the principles of investigation are placed here. As we unfold uh, the story, uh, evidence is uh, analyzed and then more people, people are brought in. The remaining members of the so-called rebel group are being tracked down in different parts of the Western Division. The investigation spans hundreds of kilometers, including remote highlands and interior locations on Vitilevu. Those behind the alleged plot were the first to be apprehended. Uh, the elements uh, that were uh, key in this training or key in this plot has been taken out first and now we are going in, 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 in more depth. ACP Henry Brown confirms there have been no guns found, but police haven't given up on the information that triggered these series of arrests. When we do any investigation, we have to follow all leads, all information. So if there is information that uh, comes up, whichever, from whatever source it comes from, we have to follow it up. So we are following it up. As it now, again, I'll reiterate what Commissioner said, we have not discovered any arms, um, uh, but we are following up all the leads. So there is no threat at all. Those still to be arrested are described as people who are being trained to carry out seditious acts. Sedition under the crimes decree is described as the intention to bring hatred, contempt or disaffection against the government or the administration of justice. It also includes exciting people to bring about unlawful change. Political violence includes urging persons to bring about changes to the constitution, the government or the administration of law through unlawful or violent means. More arrests are expected in the coming days. Edwin Nunt, FBC News. Two more people have been presented in court charged with sedition and urging political violence. Isaiah Rayenga Ndriu and Samuela Nambenai were brought to the Tavo Magistrates Court this afternoon. They are believed to be part of the same group of people allegedly training with seditious intent. Both have been remanded in custody until the 26th of this month and the case has been transferred to the Rakiraki Magistrates Court. Prime Minister of Orenge Mbaini Marama has assured the nation there is no reason to worry. Fiji is safe and not in danger of seditious or political violence. The Prime Minister addressed the topic as he spoke in Tavo today. He says with more than 50 people now charged with sedition and urging political violence and the cases before the courts, he will not comment on them directly. But as Prime Minister, he is reinforcing what the police commissioner has already stated, that the situation is under control and there is no need for the public to be alarmed. The Prime Minister said Fiji has the means to deal with any challenge to the authority of state and will use every legal means available to us. He says there will be no so-called independent states and that anyone who encourages political violence will face the full force of the law. This, he warns, needs to be understood by every Fijian. The Prime Minister says the nation should not be swayed by those who seek to divide the country. 
The government is calling on those in the agriculture export sector to diligently adhere to the standards that are in place in ensuring the impasse over the past 12 days is not repeated. This follows the lifting of the temporary import suspension placed by the New Zealand Ministry of Primary Industries yesterday. Madhu Mbolaitamana has more. The Minister for Public Enterprise, Ayaz Syed Kayum, made no bones about the importance for those in the agriculture export sector to follow procedures. It is in interest of the farmers, it is in interest of the agricultural industry in Fiji, that everybody adheres to all the standards. It's very critical. The 12-day deadlock came to an end yesterday following some vigorous discussions between New Zealand's Ministry for Primary Industries and the Ministry for Public Enterprise together with Biosecurity of Fiji. They have also said in their press release that they have uh, Biosecurity of Fiji or BAF has provided them with a comprehensive dossier on updated systems and procedures uh, that will be used to ensure that the export products uh, meets the minimum requirements specified by New Zealand's import health standards. The minister says BEF will be working closely with key stakeholders to ensure export standards are upheld. Uh, through BEF we are organizing various training uh, for farmers, for people who are working in the packing plants, uh, for the exporters in terms of the standards that need to be met. While the lifting of the temporary suspension will come as a welcome relief to farmers and exporters, the onus is now on them to ensure they keep their part of the bargain. Madhyum Boleitamana, FBC News. Still to come on FBC News, new multi-purpose court for one of the country's populated municipalities. Airports Fiji Limited has declared the highest dividend ever by a state-owned enterprise. It paid a record 15 million dividend to its shareholder, the government of Fiji. Eleanor Tarangai View has more. Airports Fiji Limited presented an unprecedented dividend payment of $7.5 million for 2014 and an interim dividend of the same amount for the first six months of this year to the government. This is a milestone achievement for AFL, considering that only three years ago it declared a dividend of $1 million. This is the result of uh, a major restructure of our revenues uh, that we undertook about a year ago. Um, and that has come to fruition. Upon the completion of the restructure, AFL is anticipating to record profits for the next couple of years. Uh, the effect of the revenue restructure uh, will not totally be uh, seen until next year uh, or the year after. So um, the profits uh, of Airports Fiji Limited is anticipated to increase even further uh, in the coming two years. Um, Public Enterprises Minister Ayaz Said Kayum says state-owned enterprises need to stand on their own two feet, and this is being demonstrated by AFL. You have now, uh, with the interim dividend being de uh, declared for the first six months of this year, which is actually the equivalent of the entire whole year for 2014, means that essentially we're getting a doubling of the dividends that's going to be paid out to government for 2015. Uh, it is a phenomenal result. And uh, we hope that uh, other state-owned enterprises can follow this uh, lead. AFL noted that the record dividend payment is being made at a time it is undertaking major capital upgrades at significant costs. Eleanor Turangaybu, FBC News. Nasino is home to around 120,000 Fijians and is the country's biggest populated corridor. A new multi-purpose court has been opened by Prime Minister Vorenge Mbaini Marama in Valilevu to train and breed Nasino sports enthusiasts. Akusita Tale has more. Declared a municipality in 2000, Nasino has become a leader in retail trade and opened a new growth area in one of the most vibrant communities. The latest is the new $650,000 multi-purpose court 
to promote healthy living and provide a sports facility for sports lovers. This facility will surely breed more sporting icons who are going to rise from our aspiring sporting students who will use these facilities to become our future national representatives. This structure is the only one of its kind in Messino and probably for the country as a whole. Located at the main valley level ground, the court is made accessible to Nasinu residents and the general public. The Prime Minister says the new facility will save Nasinu sports lovers time and money from traveling to other places to play. There's no doubt that the people of Nasinu have long been disadvantaged and deserved a lot better. Many of you have had to travel to Suva and Nasori to train or play to the required standard. But I'm pleased to say that these days are over. The facility is expected to be used by students from seven secondary schools, 13 primary schools and Fiji National University students as well as sports lovers from this area. It boasts five volleyball courts, three netball courts and a five-a-side soccer pitch. Akusita Talei, FBC News. The health ministry is keeping an eye on the Zika virus, a mosquito-borne disease that can be found in Fiji. Communicable Diseases National Advisor Dr. Mike Kama says they have sent samples of 19 suspected cases to their reference laboratory in French Polynesia for testing. Savaira Tambo reports. The Zika virus is spread to people through mosquito bites and the most common symptoms of Zika are fever, rashes, joint pain and red eyes. The Ministry of Health has received results from six samples of the 19 samples sent for testing and will alert the public on the virus soon. So basically we've been doing also tests for uh, Zika. Uh, the Ministry has just been notified um, uh, recently about um, uh, our Zika uh, virus tests. So basically uh, what the Ministry will probably make in a couple of days uh, time is basically a statement uh, on, on the Zika virus um, situation that we have. Dr. Maikama says all those that come in with chikungunya and dengue fever symptoms are also tested for Zika fever. Uh, primarily, you know, very, very little or no one dies from, from Zika, eh? but then again it can uh, uh, cause widespread uh, illness eh? and, uh, and basically our, our um, uh, young kids and also, you know, people who work uh, can um, uh, miss work and uh, miss schooling eh? for, for for uh, perhaps uh, collectively a substantial <coughs> um, uh, amount of time. Eh? Uh, so th that is basically what we are worried about. Eh? And if we have um, <coughs> a circulation of uh, Zika internally. Eh? He says the illness is usually mild with symptoms lasting from several days to a week. Sabera Tambua, FBC News. The 2015 Hibiscus Festival kicked off with the Queen's research topic presentation in Suva this afternoon. The official program begins from tomorrow and organizers are working to ensure that the public gets the best from the week-long festival. Shireen Lata reports. Nearly all preparations are complete and the Hibiscus Events Group is ready to accommodate people during the premier festival of the South Pacific from tomorrow. We've had a very nice communal setup uh, which allows us to be able to capture uh, whatever is on stage from any corner of the ground. Uh, apart from that, we also have some uh, groups coming abroad to uh, perform in the evening program. The 15 queens vying for this year's Hibiscus title today presented their research topic, which ranged from unemployment, human rights, fashion, domestic violence and others. The public will get a chance to see the queens during the opening march tomorrow morning. Tomorrow we have the opening march, uh, 11 o'clock from the uh, flea market. Uh, members of the public, uh, if you want to be part of that, be at the flea market 11 o'clock uh, to watch and to see the performance uh, and, the, and the appearance of the contestant uh, for the formal uh, opening of the World of Business Festival. Gugi Suva says despite the new venue, the environment during the festival will be the same. Meanwhile, the Hibiscus Events Group is particular about the hygiene at the food stalls, saying they have partnered with Ministry of Health and other stakeholders in getting the checks and balances right. Sharin Lata, FBC News. We have sports up next. Here's Jamie with a preview of what's coming up. Thank you, Jackie. And good evening. After the break, we hear from a recovered Waisake Naholo, who is out to reclaim his spot in the All Black squad. And Morris Brothers High School vowed to end 37-year drought in Dean's Rugby tomorrow. Stay with us for this and more.
छू 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 हे हे नमस्ते फिर जी आपके हर एक प्रॉब्लम की दवा लेकर मैं आ गई हूँ नौ से बारह बजे तक आपकी सहेली रेनो में छू 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 फोर्टी में ट्वेंटी का दिखना है मैं हूँ ना आपके साथ में मिर्ची एफ एम आरोप नौ से बारह बजे तक मंडे टू फ्राइडे मिर्ची हाट The Morris Brothers High School under 18 rugby side is confident of leaving behind a legacy from tomorrow afternoon. The Flagstaff Bay School has not won the Coke Zero Dean's trophy in the last 37 years and is out to end the drought in the final against Ratu Kandavu Levu School tomorrow. Talenda Dakadaka reports. The Morris Brothers High School side has claimed all the trophies on offer from the under 14 right up to the under 17 grades. Yet for skipper and flanker Simeone Matani Tamboa, it will all count for nothing if they do not win the one that matters the most, the under-18 title tomorrow against Ratu Kandavu Lebu School. For tomorrow, we're just uh, trying. Our main focus is just to participate in the game, and a win would be a bonus for us. So we're just coming out and trying to give our KC a run for them. The side has no other fierce rival than traditional heavyweights RKS, which last hoisted the coveted prize in 2005. We have that firm belief within us. We see Maris as the Goliath. All along, it's been our nemesis since under 14. That's true, totally true. And we look up at uh, Maris Francisco. So tomorrow, we are preparing everything. So at the end of the game, no regrets, no feelings. A sellout crowd is expected at the ANZ Stadium tomorrow to witness the two top teams battle it out for supremacy and leave behind a lasting legacy in their school's honor. Talent Oda Kadaka, FBC Sports. Seasoned back rower Netani Tale has joined the Vodafone Flying Fijians camp. Tale was at training today as the countdown to the final 31 players to the World Cup continues. His presence has delighted national coach John McKee, who says he now has the full squad to choose from. The team will hold its final training run for the week tomorrow before breaking camp for the weekend. The final 31 member team will be named next Friday. Waisaki Anaholo is confident of breaking back into the New Zealand Rugby World Cup squad after undergoing what media across the world is referring to as miracle traditional treatment. Less than a month ago, the 24-year-old winger was ruled out for three months after being diagnosed with a cracked fibula sustained in his all-black debut against Argentina. Josephine Navula caught up with a recovered Naholo today in Nandi just before he departed for New Zealand. All set to depart the country, all-blacks rep Waisaki Naholo is keen on making it back to don the black jersey for the World Cup. I've been in contact with the, um, the uh, doctor and the physios and, and then they've been uh, keeping track on how I've been going and yeah, hopefully get back out there on the field soon. I don't know how, they, how they're going to see this but yeah, I think it's, it's something I believe, I believe in and I think it, it works for many people that have been there and yeah, I think I just, I just wanted to get my recovery done and, and sort of my injury. First of all, I just want to get back out there and do rehab and recover properly and get my fitness level up again and then what, what comes next is, yeah, I can't really control but... The annual Ratu Sukuna Bowl challenge was laid down today by the two disciplined forces. The yearly event, which is a highlight in the forces calendar, sees the police and army teams go head-to-head -head in a number of sports culminating with 15's rugby. The heads of the two forces today promised the challenge to be memorable. We will make that a memorable, a memorable day. As indicated, uh, the spirit that the game will be on, it will be tough, it will be rough. We are in blue, and unfortunately we have also imported a blue bull uh, trainer to assist us. And uh, the two teams are going to run onto the ground, and I'm going to tell you again, you're going to meet one of the best RFMF Sukuna Bowl team ever. The Sukuna Bowl will be played on September 18th in Suva. The Fiji Pearls are determined to win all its remaining matches at the Netball World Cup. The side beat Scotland 48-42 in its last pool match in the Tier 2 competition and remains in contention of a ninth place finish. 
Golf's World Number 16, Matt Kusha, has signed on to compete in the Fiji International in Singatoka next month. Certain that Kusha's involvement will entice more world class players to the prestigious event. He's the first of our top 20 uh, players for this event, which is great news. Um, and basically, as I said, he actually takes the event to a new level. And whilst today is about the announcement of Matt, we will over the next, uh, next month announce some further players as well. The Fiji International will be held at the Natandola Bay Championship course in Singatoka from October 15th to the 18th. That's it from Sports Tonight. Good evening. Fijians residing overseas are encouraged to return to their homeland, build a house and invest in the country. The call is made by Prime Minister Vurenge Mbaini Marama. Akusita Tale reports. Fijians living overseas have been acknowledged for their hard work in getting a better living, with many already setting up businesses in their adopted countries. Prime Minister Vorenge Ben Marama says Fiji is open to welcoming them back into the Fijian family to build a house and invest in their country of birth. Please come home, but don't, don't come home empty-handed, come with a pocket full of money, come and invest, come and build a home, uh, come and life, make life prosperous for Fiji. As with tens of, tens of thousands of Fijians living in Australia, New Zealand, or the United States, these people have carved out new life for themselves. Speaking in Asinu yesterday, Mbani Marama highlighted his recent trip to Canada, where over 25,000 Fijians now live. And many of these people left school, or sorry, left Fiji for good in the wake of the terrible events of 1987 and 2000. But I want to attract uh, as many as possible back to their homeland. Just as I want to persuade any former Fijian to engage with our nation as we work together to continue to build the new Fiji. Baini Marama says he will also relay this call when he travels to Sydney on October 17th to celebrate Fiji Day with the Fijian community there. Akusita Tale, FBC News. Fine and windy weather conditions prevailed over the country today. A trough of low pressure remains slow moving over Tuvalu and extends southeastwards over Wallace and Petuna, Samoa. Savo Savo, Nandi, Lautoka and Bar recorded temperatures in high 20s with 26, 27 and 28 degrees respectively. Lombasa recorded the highest at 31 and Suva the coolest at 24 degrees. A trough of low pressure to the north of Fiji is expected to drift south and affect the group from tomorrow. There will be fine weather apart from brief showers about the interior and eastern parts of the larger islands. Moderate to fresh southeast winds gusty at times becoming easterly later today. Cool nights, rough seas. An outlook for Sunday is some showers over most places. And the main points again. Prime Minister Vorenge Mbaini Marama assures nation is safe as two more people are charged for sedition in Raki Raki. Fiji to strengthen export procedure compliance as New Zealand lifts ban on agro imports and airports Fiji Limited bounces back from trouble days and pays record dividend of $15 million. Now to our poll segment, we're asking... Do you think Fiji underestimated its pool opponents at the Netball World Cup? Visit our FBC website to take part. Remember, you can send us newsworthy pictures and videos on email citizenseyes at fbc.com.fj or share it with us via Facebook page, FBC News. And if you're on Twitter, follow and tweet us your news tips at FBC underscore news or simply hashtag FBC News. You've been watching FBC News. I'm Jackie Spade. Have a safe and enjoyable weekend.